You know, it's always, uh, as, as, as these directors know, I, when I reach out to somebody about uh, directing at OSF, I try to stress it's the rep company, we cast out of the rep company, and that is always the goal. Um, and directors come and see up to nine, or even in this, this year, I think it'll be 10 productions at once, including the four that we're working on uh, in early June. And uh, we do try to cast out of the current company. With that said, as, as you all know, I have a fairly eclectic taste. So we keep trying new things that uh, force us to bring in new types of actors with different skill sets, maybe uh, uh, different uh, racial and ethnic identities or different ages, whatever it is. So we try to strike a balance. And I think that's always been true of OSF, but we try to strike a balance between uh, ongoing company members and artists who bring in fresh perspectives. Um, last year to this year, uh, turned out through a lot of different factors to be one of the largest um, turnovers in the acting company. There were more people who needed to step aside for a little while. There were more people I didn't have jobs for. There were more new people we were bringing in. So it's one of the bigger influxes of new folks. But at the same time, we're welcoming back, I think it's 13 uh, company members, including some names you've already heard, Tony DeBruno, Richard Howard, like some really uh, a major, major company members who've been away, who are coming back in. So it's just trying to find that balance. Um, in terms of the process of each individual play being cast, why don't you guys talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so, uh, so it goes like this. You say, so I saw all the plays, Bill, and I think these 13 people would be so good in my play. <laughs> and, and Bill says, yeah, okay, well, let's see. And so by the time we go through the months-long process, kind of two of those people <laughs> show up in your play. <laughs> And the other 11 are better than your first idea was anyway. And, and so it's such a, it is, a, it is the most, it is an iterative, sometimes cumbersome process to find your way there. And then it's like, well, yeah, that person will be here. And then Bill will call and say, well, do you want the good news or the bad news? And he's like, the good news is you have this person, this person, this person. The bad news is that person's got to go into Mary's show. So it's a, it really is, you know, Bill's very hard job is to try to satisfy these plays as we as directors think these are the sorts of folks I need in order to accomplish this. And of course it's a company and companies, you know, there are 11 plays that have to be made here and how it gets spread across the seas and is, uh, is its own factor. But I, 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 can, I can only say this, I, I share this so nakedly only to be say, because I also told Bill when I got here, I, I, I wouldn't trade one person in my cast for someone else. You know, so the outcome is superb, but the journey's a, a terrifically challenging one. <laughs> it, in the real world, the way you cast a part is um, <laughs> you have auditions, and various agents send various people, and you have selections from the play, which are called sides, and people come in and read for particular parts and sometimes you're not interested or you think, well, maybe for another part, you have callbacks and this and that. None of that happens at OSF. It's not the culture of the company to audition, except in certain circumstances. And actually for the musicals, they will come in and sing for you on a volunteer basis. <laughs> um, so my experience of casting at OSF is you, you come in in this fog of five days, see nine plays, and you know, they're all four and a half hours long because of the classical nature of the repertoire. <laughs> so you like stagger up the hill to your apartment and then like, it's time to turn around and stagger back. Um, and then three months later, Bill calls you and says, how about so-and-so? And you're like, what did, what did they do again? Um, so it's a very different magical process. <laughs> directed here like it's exponentially easier the second time than the first like exponentially because you've not only worked with a bunch of them you've seen a lot more of the shows you've met them around town you you have a sense of it, it just it's so much easier the, the second time around and I'm sure as you go on you don't have any of that who is that you don't have any any of that any of that anymore I'm proud the guys and dolls often the musical does bring in what we call in the biz a ringer which means the 
wonderful soprano, um, you know, someone who, who's specially talented in some area. But we actually are doing Guys and Dolls entirely from within the company, not going out, not auditioning anyone. I, th I think that all of this is true. I, I find it for myself as a director, and I'm not sure if you guys did it, but you write little character bios where you kind of describe your vision for what the character is, and those kind of start as a, lead, uh, a jumping off point too sometimes to, to who you're imagining those characters to be um, as, you, as you discuss the company. So yeah.